Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Got some four young people up here. I think Jane has got some good words for you. Welcome. Good morning. Can you hear me? Some can, some can't. Keep it close to my house. Okay. Would you tell everybody one more time your first names, just to remind us, okay? Caden. Caden with a K. K and Keaton with a K. Okay. And um Silver with the S. Silver. And harmony with the H. <laughs> and I'm Grandma Jane with a G, so there. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about <clears throat> a kind of a serious topic. It's, um, it's, I'm going to talk about dying and death. You have to speak really close to the mic. I'm going to talk about dying and death. Does that scare you? No. Have you had anybody that you really, really loved or a pet that died? You lost a buddy, okay. Anybody else? You lost an uncle. When that happens, how do you feel? Sad? Sad, is that the best one? The sad feeling when we lose someone we really love? We have a really old dog. Her name is Kobe Wan Kenobi, Kobe for short, and she's a German Shepherd, and she is 13 years old, and she's getting really, really weak. And we know what's going to happen, don't we? We know eventually she's going to die. And I'm going to be very sad, and I'm probably going to cry and carry on, but right now, while she's alive, I want her to have the best life she possibly can. I, and so I throw sticks for her, and she brings them back. And I take her on walks, and I rub her backside because it's sore. So while she's alive, I want her to be happy. While I'm alive, I want to be happy. How about you? While you're alive, you want to be happy too? All right. That's pretty good. How, how do we live our lives so that folks will know that we're alive and that we can do good things while we're alive. How would we do that? What are some actions we could take that would show folks we're alive and good? I thought about being kind to other people. Is that a good one? And being courteous. What else did I think? I have to make lists, you know. When you get old, you have to make lists. Um, how about while we're still alive, should we hug people we love? Yes, I think so too. Um, should we thank people when they're kind to us? I agree. Is there anything else you can think of that we can do while we're still alive before we die um, to live more like Jesus? Not lie. Not lie? So you think telling the truth would be a good thing to do as we're alive. Anybody agree with that? I get all kinds of nods. Okay, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, and it's kind of a grown-up topic, but I hope you'll enjoy listening, and I'm, I'm going to tell some stories, okay? Thanks for coming up.
The scripture lesson that Jane has chosen for this morning, there's just two verses. The first one's from John, the second one's from 1 Corinthians. Peace I leave with you. And the second one, O death, where is your victory? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Always appreciated Jane being willing to step up and to, to do whatever is asked of her. And she is a very wise lady, and she has always had something great to share with us that is so relevant. As you look at the uh, title of her, uh, of her sermon this morning, it probably applies. We probably can identify with it. So Jane, this is your on. Thanks, Terry. Okay. Good morning. Okay, Georgia on the back row will tell me if I, if I don't speak loud enough, she has a signal already. Can you hear me, Georgia? Okay, good. Well, are you ready for an adventure this morning? Well, we're gonna tackle a sometimes very serious topic called death and dying. With all due respect, most of us are in the fourth quarter of our lives. If we live to be 100, then anyone over 75 is in the fourth quarter of their lives. S never mind, I'm not gonna ask you to hold up your hand if you plan to live to be 100, but I do. So, good luck, honey. How do we approach this knowledge that each one of us is going to die? There's no other way to get out of this life Animals don't know they're going to die. They just live each day as it comes. We humans know we're going to die. And therefore, the question is, how do we prepare for it, mentally and emotionally? This is the goal for our time together, to think about our lives and our deaths. The word death is not used much. Um, we use all sorts of other references to death, like crossing the rainbow bridge, or past, or he slipped away, or she went to sleep in the arms of Jesus, and all these sorts of different kinds of um, references because we don't like to even use the word die or death. It's a subject we'd all kind of like to avoid. We just like to put that out of our mind, that maybe we're going to be the one that doesn't die. I read one time that religions, old religions and current religions, were developed with the whole idea that it would help people face death. There was talk of eternal life, and so we have religion and how we would live so that we would be able to face death if there was a life after that. Atheists do not believe in life after death. They just live for the day because this life is all they know. This is all they have. <clears throat> there was a man who went to heaven and um, when he was at the gate, St. Peter uh, was there and the man said, I have a suitcase I really want to bring into heaven. And St. Peter said, no, you don't need anything in heaven. There's no need to bring a suitcase in. But the man said, oh, St. Peter, please, 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 let me bring in this suitcase. It is so important to me. Please let me bring it in. St. Peter said, no. The man insisted. He carried on and carried on. And St. Peter finally, believe it or not, relented. He said, all right, bring it in. Bring that heavy old suitcase in here. And so the man went in, and St. Peter was curious. He said, just what is in that suitcase? <clears throat> and the man said, I'll show you. So he opens up his suitcase, and the whole suitcase was full of gold. And St. Peter said, you brought pavement? We've all heard stories of the beautiful island of somewhere, mansions over the hilltop, lands where we never grow old, streets of gold, and so on. 
But we truly don't know what heaven is like. We've heard about the pie and the sky and the sweet by and by, and we've been told that we must earn it. We must earn it by living the best life we know how to live. Jesus provided the model for our behavior. We come on Sunday mornings to remind, to be reminded of how to live and care for other people. We come to stop and think about our own behavior. And we come so that we can learn to live a better life. We also come to be greeted and cared for by our friends right here. Some of us would hate to miss coffee hour, where we have a chance to meet and greet our friends and our inspirations. That's where <clears throat> two of the people in our midst serve us coffee, and they are our inspirations. Some of you know who I'm talking about. How do we want to be remembered? What is the value of this life we lead? My friend Priscilla, on her 80th birthday, threw herself a party, and she asked those of us who were her friends to come and say things like we would say at her celebration of life. Come and say what um, you would say at my funeral. She said, I want to hear what you have to say while I'm still alive. Well, now that's an interesting thought. If we have something wonderful to say about our, or to our friends and family, why should we wait until they're no longer with us? Maybe we should tell them the things we love about them right now. While we can, thank them for being the blessing they have been to our lives. Thank you to each one of you for being a blessing to my life. We can live our lives each day the way we want to be remembered. Now that's a challenge. Fears of death and dying are very common. 70% of us really fear death. 30% of us are really scared to death. We have severe fears of death. A common fear in our Western society is that the process of dying will be painful and prolonged and will reduce the quality of our lives. What specific fears do we have about death and dying? I have about seven of them. And some of these I didn't even know I was afraid of. Now I know. The first one is the fear of separation from loved ones from your home and from your job. Some of this, some of us love life so intensely that we don't want it to ever end. Fear of becoming a burden to others. That's a big one for me. I have a husband who's younger, and I really don't want to become a burden. Another fear is fear for dependence. If we have family or friends that are counting on us, we are afraid for them after we're gone. We have fear of pain or other worsening symptoms. Sometimes our life gets so bad and so painful and so hard that death is not the enemy. Fear of being unable to complete life tasks or responsibilities. I am afraid that I won't be able to feed myself or dress myself or go to the bathroom myself. But that's just the way it is. That's a fear. Fear for others. Fears for the fears of others. For example, um, I know my sweet husband loves me dearly, and so I, am, I will be afraid of the sadness it would bring to him when I go. That's a fear. And some folks just have a fear of being dead. How can we prepare for our own death? What needs to be done to ease the transition for our families and the ones who are left? We already know that we need a will 
and a health care power of attorney and a DNR, a do not resuscitate if our brains are dead, a legal power of attorney, a living will, an organ donation preference. Now I smile at this one. <clears throat> I don't know what this body has got to offer. <laughs> my eyes have lenses. My ears have aids. My heart has a blockage. My teeth are capped. My bones are arthritic, and my legs and my feet ache. Oh well, my intentions are good. <laughs> Science can do what it wills with my body and cremate the leftovers. I will have no need for it anymore. There are a number of things that we can talk about and take care of before we die. We all have stuff. Anybody out there have stuff? <laughs> what is to become of our stuff? I am a thrift store shopper, a junkie. It's a great joy in my life to find bargains. What I've noticed in thrift stores is, is there are these precious little mementos that little old ladies and gentlemen have left. They've kept them, they've been so important to them, and then they die, and nobody wants them, and they don't need them. So off to the thrift shop they go. Oh, I forgot to tell you something my sister said. Back there where I was talking about my bones and ears and heart and all that sort of thing, I got a letter from my sister. She um, wrote an article on ageism. She said, I feel like my body is aging when I roll out of bed in the morning and I have to move around to get my joints working. I see smiles out there. But my spirit is light and I feel good. Every day teaches me that age is a gift. Every day teaches me that age is a gift, okay? You can experience kindness every day. You can sleep well at night knowing you have tried your best to live a life that Jesus modeled. Okay, that's that one. We got rid of our stuff. Yes, if we get rid of our stuff, those who come behind us will appreciate any of those decisions we have made beforehand. This spring, I led a group of folks in a session called Writing Your Own Obituary. This is another way we can help our family with the transition involved in death. It's also a help to the pastor or whoever handles the service. Uh, especially if the pastor doesn't know a person, that would be tough. No one really knows us like we know ourselves. No spouse, no child, no parent. No one really knows us like we know ourselves. Have you written your obituary? JP and I are working on ours. His is going to take an encyclopedia. A number of years ago, um, we had an interim pastor who came to our Unitarian Universalist Church in Columbia, and she talked about this and brought a form. So I snatched a copy of that form, and that was what our little group used to think about what we could write about ourselves. Um, such things as, what do I want to be remembered for? Important people and pets in my life. To whom was I grateful? Hymns I want sung. Scripture I want read. All of these are included. Um, what are the greatest accomplishments of my life? What have you loved doing? What regrets do you have? What obstacles and challenges have you to overcome in your life? When do you feel happiest and most alive? How would you sum up your character, your spirit, or your ethical code by which you live? Those are some of the questions. I brought copies for you, if you like, and I think JP's going to spread them on that back bench. And I also brought my cards, my counseling cards, 
um, I have counseling skills and I like to use them and so I would offer that service to you at no charge if you would be interested. So planning our funeral may sound morbid, but for folks left behind and for our own peace of mind, we can truly rest in peace. You know, we were never meant to survive. Death has always been present. It seems the wisest plan is to do our best to prepare for our own deaths, mentally and emotionally, take care of all the details we can for our families and friends, talk to our families about our wishes, and then get on with living our lives the best we can, living the life that Jesus was reported to live, living the life that Jesus was reported to live. So there you have it. Let's get on with living the fourth quarter of our lives. Thank you, Jane. Our hymn of reflection is on the screen, or it's in your hymnal number 129. You may remain seated. This is the part of the service that we can now participate in directly as we give back to 